Thank you, sir. Hello and welcome to this uh, post-monetary policy press conference. Uh, this is the uh, last of this calendar year. And I'd like to welcome all the media friends uh, for this uh, you know, press conference. Uh, we have with us uh, Honorable Governor uh, Shri Shakti Kandas, uh, Deputy Governor Dr. M.D. Patra, uh, Shri M. Rajeshwar Rao, Shri T. Rabi Shankar, and Shri uh, J. Swaminathan. Also uh, with them are uh, our senior colleagues, uh, Dr. O.P. Mal, Executive Director, uh, Dr. Rajiv Ranjan, Executive Director. So uh, we'll begin the uh, press conference uh, with your opening remarks. So may I request you to uh, do the opening remarks? Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, all of you, for being here. And I think uh, in future, just governor will be better than honorable governor. So. <laughs> Okay, I have, uh, I would like to make a few observations uh, to capture the essence of today's uh, monetary policy. And uh, I would like to make a few points. First, the years 2020 to 2023 will perhaps go down in history as a period of great volatility. Number two, India's GDP growth remains resilient and robust as reflected in our projection of 7% growth for the current year. Third, on the inflation front, the summer of 22 is behind us. We have made significant progress in bringing down inflation. The steady decline in core inflation indicates that monetary policy is working. But don't rush into any conclusion. Please wait for the next point. The fourth point is moving forward, inflation management cannot be on autopilot. The future path is expected to be clouded by uncertain food prices. CPI data for November is expected to be high. Five, the MPC will be highly alert to any signs of derailing of the ongoing disinflation process. Based on evolving situation, the MPC will take appropriate action to reach the 4% to reach the 4% target. Six, liquidity will be actively managed consistent with monetary policy. Seven, the balance sheet of the financial sector remains robust sectoral and institution specific signs of stress are being proactively monitored and addressed we do not wait for the house to catch fire and then act prudence at all times is our guiding philosophy eight current account deficit is expected to be modest and comfortably financed nine Foreign exchange reserves at US dollar 604 billion provide a strong buffer against global spillovers. 10. The stability of the Indian rupee reflects the improving macroeconomic fundamentals of the Indian economy and its resilience in the face of formidable global tsunamis. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for those opening. And what I propose to do is that, uh, you know, uh, this I, a copy of this we will just upload in our website so that it is easy for, you know, all of you to do the reporting. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, sir, for those opening remarks. Uh, before we go ahead, uh, may I request my media colleagues, please wait for your turn to be called out and uh, restrict yourself to one question each. If time permits, then we'll go for another question. Sir, I'll begin uh, by inviting uh, Mr. M. Govardhan Rangan from Economic Times to ask his question. Good afternoon, Governor. Uh, so uh, this time, in terms of uh, so monetary policy, you have taken out all the surprises. It's kind of uh, so more than what the market asked for. So we move to the next uh, topic that you interest uh, in, in terms of the financial stability. When you say that uh, you won't wait for the house to catch fire. So last time you saw some smoke in unsecured loans and uh, doused it. So which are the areas where you see smoke now? in the sense for you to say that you won't wait for the house to catch fire. Thanks. You see, as a part of our uh, supervision and as a part of our uh, very close and uh, proactive uh, monitoring of uh, the financial sector 
and individual financial institutions. Our endeavor is always to remain up to date. We have deepened our supervisory methods. Our endeavor is also to use or try to use the smell test also. I have talked about it earlier. So whenever we smell any stress building up anywhere at the system level or at individual entity level, we deal with it in the appropriate way. Uh, Yelly, you are warning about the unsecured loans for quite some time before you acted. Is there any segment that where you feel there is a warning necessary now? No, I cannot uh, spell out. As and when something like that uh, becomes uh, necessary, we will act. At this point of time, as I have said in my statement today, that the balance sheet of the Indian financial sector continues to be robust. And all the financial parameters of NBFCs and banks at the system level as well as at individual level, they also continue to be well above the minimum regulatory parameters whether it is in terms of uh, capital adequacy or in terms of uh, uh, provisioning for bad loans or even on issues of, uh, even on the parameter of profitability. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to Ms. Lata Venkatesh from CNBC TV. Thank you, Yogesh. And thank you, Governor, for asking people to drop the word honorable. I think that's an extremely honorable statement to make. Thank, thank you. you for that. So questions, uh, for the first time you have used the words, regulators should also be mindful of over-tightening. Can we therefore expect the interbank call rate to come towards the repo rate of 6.5? It has been at 6.75 for the better part of a couple of months. On the issue of financial stability, you have just said that connected lending framework will be to strengthen the pricing and management of uh, credit by uh, banks. Does this mean that there will be a little more tightening? Uh, will that be the net result of that framework? And just a, a doubt which comes on this connected lending. That is the third question. So it's connected to connected lending. When you announce the unsecured loans, was there a worry that bank loans are going to stock market? Because there was a report uh, from Ashish Gupta that uh, derivatives are now 400 times. Uh, okay. Is there any fear ne that this money see, is going there? Whatever was in our mind, we have spelled out. These are uh, precautionary measures which we have taken. Our endeavor is always, our effort is always to act proactively before the, you know, the bubble bursts, before the stress builds up. We act, our endeavor, our effort is always to act uh, proactively. And I have stated very clearly that these are preemptive measures, which we have said. Just, just hold on. And with regard to connected lending, I would request DG uh, Rajeshwar Rao to please uh, answer that uh, question. And with regard to the other thing which you said about... Mindful uh, of over-tightening. Uh, that over-tightening. We always take a balanced call. I would request DG Michael Patra to reply that. I will supplement thereafter if uh, need be. So first uh, DG Rajeshwar Rao and then DG Michael Patra. Thank you, Governor. I think there is a bit of a misunderstanding between interconnectedness and connected lending. When we talk about connected lending, it's essentially the lending to persons who have the position to control or influence the decision of a lender. So it is in that context that this uh, guideline on connected lending is being conceived of. Right now, the regulations vary between the regulated entities, there are scattered provisions. So in order to bring about uniformity in the process of these regulations, we are coming out with some draft guidelines which will help to clarify the position and have a uniformity in the reg regulatory approach to connected lending amongst all regulated entities. Uh, if you've noticed in the first uh, few days of December, the call rate has already started gravitating towards the repo rate. And in fact, on the 4th or 5th, it was 6.45 sub-repo. And you will see that this is coincidental with government spending. Government balances have been coming down, and therefore, so the, uh, the previous tightness was also associated with a buildup of balances. Okay, and on the over tightening, I think I'll let the author. <laughs> you see, we have always tried to take a balanced call. And this is not the first time that uh, we have said, what is our uh, monetary policy as prescribed in the law? Primary target is price control, 
in terms of maintaining 4% inflation, which I have emphasized. I have emphasized it very clearly in my statement that 4% is our target. I mentioned it again here in my opening remarks. And the law also requires that we have to keep in mind the objective of growth. Last year in May, we spelled out that uh, uh, when we shifted our uh, focus from, uh, you know, when we shifted our focus and prioritized inflation over growth, that same approach uh, continues. There is no change in that stance. It is to place things in the particular perspective. I have tried to explain the, you know, the overall approach that central banks adopt and in particular the approach that Reserve Bank has been approaching. Our decisions, as I have said, are dependent on two major parameters, that is inflation and uh, growth. Inflation is our top priority now. We have still a distance to cover to reach uh, 4%. So therefore, the use of uh, that, uh, the risk of over-tightening should be read along with the previous part, you know, the previous sentence, where I think I have said that uh, a few months of good data should not push us into some kind of a complacency. And the fact that inflation has come within the target range also should not lead to any kind of complacency. So a mention of the word over tightening should not be read as it would be wrong to think or assume that uh, a change of uh, our approach or that, uh, you know, that uh, any kind of loosening, etc., is round the corner. That's not on the table at the moment, let me be very clear. It's not at all on, on the table. Look at the inflation numbers. We have said, uh, look at the inflation trajectory. So we still have a distance to cover. Was the stock market exuberance one reason? Do you fear bank money going there? No, I think, uh, I mean, that's a, uh, you know, that's a very hypothetical uh, question. There have been anecdotal uh, write-ups, but we are mindful of all possible, uh, you know, we are mindful of all possible risks uh, building up. For stock markets, there is a stock market regulator. The stock market regulator, that is SEBI, monitors what is happening in the stock markets. And if there is something happening which is of concern uh, to the SEBI or it comes to the notice of SEBI, I am sure they will bring it to our notice. Thank you, sirs. I will move on to Mr. Ankur Mishra from ET now to ask his question. I want, <coughs> uh, thank you, Yogesh, sir. I want to draw your attention towards the uh, announcement which was made in the last policy. You had warned about unsecured loans uh, portfolio, and uh, later on there was an announcement from Reserve Bank of India. One, I want to understand that uh, a few of the players have said that they are going slow on uh, sub 50,000 or small ticket size loans. Uh, did you see some problem there uh, particularly? And another thing, NBFCs had also uh, claimed to have reached out to you regarding the problem which will be arising out uh, after the circular which you have issued. Is there some rethinking? Have you done some discussion? Would you like to take that question? Sure. Uh, see, as it was mentioned uh, while making that announcement itself, that it's a preemptive measure uh, to bring certain prudence and to bring an end to any sort of exuberance that may be exhibited by certain lenders. And uh, effort was made over the previous three, four months by way of uh, sensitizing the players to put adequate internal control measures to ensure that the risk buildup is avoided. As uh, the market was not responding enough to that, there was necessity for, as we had mentioned earlier, that we watch the data. And basis the data, we have taken certain measure to strengthen the uh, prudential measures that the regulated entities have to put in place. So it is too early to see or pass a conclusion as to what sort of effect it is taking, but at least uh, from, from our interactions with the uh, market participants, the financial system as well as some of the articles are alluding to the fact that uh, there are risk management practices are getting better, underwriting is getting, um, getting better, and any business model that is likely to throw up an enhanced risk is curtailed. So that is our intention. So it 
it is it is not uh, not to curtail the growth and we have taken care to exclude growth drivers the segments like home loans or vehicle loans or to the small borrowers or to SSG, they, those segments have been kept outside of this purview. So we would uh, expect the lenders to conduct uh, themselves and uh, draw their business models in a manner in which an avoidable risk buildup is mitigated. After your assessment, sorry sir, after your assessment is there also consideration as I mentioned about NBFCs uh, that uh, you are having some kind of discussion with problems which are faced? See, essentially these measures were intended to address uh, the interconnectedness uh, that was building up within the financial system and also to curtail because we, as we had highlighted, uh, it was growing at about 24-25% uh, on a year-on-year -year basis as compared to the rest of the system that was growing at about 12 to 14%. So that particular segment of bank lending to NBFC uh, had to be uh, kind of calibrated so that we have done, tried doing it through the risk weight and also the NBFC's growth in certain segments was, was, was an outlier. Again, that particular segment we have to add risk weight. So it's a kind of a prudential measure at this point in time. It is not to deny liquidity. It is not to ration the lending. It's only we would like uh, the lenders to have adequate risk weights put in place, limits to be set in place for a prudential monitoring. That's all. Thank you, sirs. I'll move on to this side, sir. Uh, Today, one TV channel has been launched, NDTV Profit. I'll request Vishwanath Nair to ask his question from me. <coughs> Thank you so much, uh, Yogeshi. Uh, Governor, uh, first question, I mean, my, my point uh, that I want to ask you is, is whether uh, this five policies of no action uh, and maintaining this withdrawal of accommodation stance, does that inadvertently communicate a neutral stance to the market? Because you are not neutral yet. but five policies of no action could indicate that? That is five policies of uh, no action no and? Uh, and as well as maintaining the withdrawal of accommodation stance, uh -huh. does that communicate a neutral stance to the market by any chance, that you are neutral on rates? No, I don't know on what basis you are reaching uh, that conclusion. We do not uh, communicate anything inadvertently. Let me be make it very clear. All our uh, communication is carefully prepared. We know, we are aware that, uh, you know, the markets and uh, uh, the media, you analyze each and every corner of the statement, the comma, full stop, everything. So we are very careful in our communication. There is no inadvertence in any of our communication. So if somebody is assuming that it's a signal to moving towards uh, a uh, neutral stance, I think it will be incorrect. It will not be correct at all. You see, infl you look at the inflation uh, trajectory. We are still away from 4% target. And that is why the, uh, you know, and we have said that uh, monetary policy continues to remain actively disinflationary. So therefore, one should not, it would be a mistake to read uh, that we are giving any kind of signal uh, towards uh, a move, you know, any kinds of any kind of a signal that we are moving towards neutral. That would be a wrong interpretation. Thank you, sir. I'll invite uh, Mr. Manujit Saha from Business Standard to ask his question. <coughs> Good afternoon, sir. Uh, uh, is the RBI comfortable <coughs> with an with a EMIR uh, compliant MOU with ESMA? Does that addresses the concern? of uh, inspection, audit, and a possible penalty. Is RBI comfortable with that? And also one clarification, the, the, you didn't mention the word OMO this time. The show was hanging. Sorry? For the, you didn't mention the word OMO this time. Okay. The show was hanging for the last two months. So can we assume that it's off the table now because liquidity has been tight? It's tight. We have said, I'll take the OMO question. And with regard to the ESMA part, I will uh, pass it on to Deputy Governor Ravi Shankar. We have not said that it is off the table. We have announced that in the last meeting. We have said that due to certain factors which are not in our control, it is very clearly mentioned in the statement, certain factors which are not in our control, like uh, the demand for currency during the festival season, the buildup of cash balances uh, in the government, which of course have now started uh, coming down because government spending has uh, picked up. 
there are certain factors which are uh, beyond our control and based on market movement we also make market interventions which have impact on liquidity all that i have said in the statement is that the need to deploy this instrument has not arisen beyond that i have not said that uh, it is off the table that instrument remains very much uh, on the table that is always in arjuna's quiver it will be used if and when required depending on the evolving liquidity conditions i would request uh, dg ravi shankar to take the other part of the question thank you sir uh, we believe these mous or agreements with respect to market infrastructure agencies like ccil should be underpinned by the word that is used in their regulations cooperation there should be cooperation documents cooperative documents and in that respect we believe that they should follow the principle of mutual respect one and principle of mutual trust they should also be characterized by the principle of deference to local regulation in other words we are not comfortable with uh, you know with with regulations anywhere which are characterized by extra territorial jurisdiction so so you know and the one we signed with uh, bank of england it's there on the website you would have gone through you would have noticed that the emphasis is on deference and cooperation thank you sirs i'll move on to uh, mr shain ghosh uh, from the mint that's it Hi, um, you know, following your guidelines on risk weights. A little louder. Hi, following your guidelines on risk weights, a lot of uh, lenders have decided to curtail uh, smaller loans, as as he also asked. But then, do you think that the sudden closure of the tap would affect that section of borrowers who were so far dependent on that? That's one. Second question, sir, is uh, that you know there have been there have been a lot of instances of cooperative bank, uh, you know, uh, board changes recently. Then. uh ed rates and all that so you know as as a regulator how do you tackle the cases of corporate governance issues governance issues at the uh, cooperative bank level thank you with, with regard to ed rates etc i cannot make any comment it is uh, i mean that's an independent autonomous body but with regard to the other two components of your question i would request uh, dg rajeshwar rao and swaminathan between themselves you can uh, between the two dgs you can uh, take those questions i think uh, the first point about the risk weights i think this as already mentioned it's essentially a prudential measure to curb growth or moderate the credit growth in certain specific sectors it is not tantamount to turning off the tap the tap is open but only thing maybe the pressure has been reduced a bit so i don't think that is really the intention and not unlikely to be the outcome of the measure which we have actually announced now coming to the uh, governance issues i think broadly we say that the through the supervisory process we have a close monitoring of the various parameters of the functioning of the regulated entities which includes governance business models risk management compliance etc so it is a package which which monitors the entire functioning of these regulated entities so if there are certain concerns about the regulated entity in so far as governance is concerned action would be i mean there would be an engagement with the concerned entity to take appropriate action as may be necessary uh, mr swamnathan thank you uh, just to supplement on that on this up to 50000 category uh, to put a context to it the the composition of that particular segment is less than half a percent of the total outstandings so while of course it may be dealing with a lot of number of people uh it's a segment that uh, cannot pose a great risk on its own because the total quantum itself is less than half a percent that that's in terms of the context part the second is that we have as i mentioned that uh, we have what we would like to curtail and uh, expect the lending institutions to provide for more by way of additional risk weight is some of those consumption led segments or unsecured credit which do not have a defined end use we have taken care to exclude uh, to support whatever growth drivers are already there so whatever lending that was taking place for which a clear end use was not visible or completely unsecured uh, without a clear purpose is what will get curtailed basis this there will be some recalibration of business models also recalibration of the growth number that is what is the intended effect of the regulation so if it is playing out i think that is that is only giving the intended uh, results 
And as DJ MRR clarified, it is not our intention to deny or ration credit. I think there are enough uh, headrooms available. The exposure framework permits adequate uh, lending to be provided for supporting the growth. And uh, on the second part, again to supplement on that, governance and effectiveness of assurance function has been on top of our priority. So from a qualitative perspective, while of course quantitative parameters, the entire financial system looks very good at this point in time, what we would like to focus is on the qualitative parameters. So that is how you see, it has always been a focus area, but you might hear us more on governance and uh, the effectiveness of assurance functions because we feel that uh, strengthening of these two is what will ensure a continued stability of the financial system. So that's why the emphasis is. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Uh, I'll uh, request uh, Ms. Shyama Mishra from Doordarshan to ask her question. Hi, Governor. Uh, are there any external factors that are looking promising for the Indian economy? That are looking promising for the Indian economy? I think uh, the major factor is that I think there is growing international confidence on India's economy. Our interaction with uh, you know, interactions with uh, uh, my interactions with uh, governors of other countries, our interaction with various other uh, regulators and stakeholders and uh, other uh, investors in particular from other countries, major investors who visit India and uh, some of them do come to RBI and meet us. I think there is a growing uh, confidence in uh, the potential of Indian economy and, the Indi and India's capacity to grow. I think that uh, is probably uh, something uh, which is uh, of, uh, you know, which is really noteworthy. And uh, with regard to that also translates into uh, another area, namely I think confidence from the point of view of investment, making investment. Confidence also from the point of view of that is a kind of a confidence in the, in the, the quality of Indian products and more particularly the quality of India's services exports. There is a greater trust confidence on the quality of our uh, merchandise exports, on the quality of our uh, uh, services uh, uh, exports. That is the inner end quality and the strength of all that we are uh, doing. Is there anything else you would like to add? That's all. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to this side, I'll uh, request Mr. Anuprai from Bloomberg to ask his question. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, you, um, you are sounding very cautious about inflation and uh, previously you have said that we will not uh, consider easing or think of easing before it, uh, you know, uh, settles around 4% on a sustainable basis. But going by the analysts, uh, it is not going to happen before 2025. So uh, are you going to keep rates elevated before, I mean, for this whole year, next year, or something else will prompt you to cut probably U.S. Fed rate or something? You see, specifically on uh, the rates and uh, the cut or etc., we have very explicitly stated, I have stated, and I think uh, DG Michael Patra has also stated, we refrain from giving any forward guidance. Considering that with the kind of uncertainty that lies ahead of us, and in my concluding para of my statement, I have said that uh, the future looks very fickle. And I have also said that uh, new shocks can hit uh, any economy, it can come from anywhere and hit any economy any time. So if that is the level of uncertainty, and if our inflation is still quite away from 4%, we just cannot give any forward guidance about uh, whether we will tighten further or we will uh, loosen or what we will do. Everything depends on the, uh, on the evolving situation. It is not possible in the current situation for anyone, any central bank to give a forward guidance, you would have seen that the level of forward guidance also given by many central banks internationally have, you know, now sort of have uh, come down. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll move on to his right. Uh, I'll invite Mr. Roysuke Hanada from Nikkei Asia to ask his question. 
Uh, I want to ask about the general assessment of the Indian economy. As everyone is aware, the latest GDP statistics show the robust growth. However, at the same time, some private institute uh, reported that the uh, jobless rate temporarily record over 10% in October. I understand it, it's not a government official statistic, but what do you think about the uh, current and future uh, expectation regarding uh, the employment environment in India? We have analyzed all these aspects in uh, great detail internally. I would request DJ Michael Patra to please uh, take that question. Uh, there are now very credible uh, uh, official statistics on employment. So I will uh, refer you to the periodic labor force survey, which is put out by the government of India. That has been conducted since April 2017. So you have a consistent series right from 2017, July. And if you look at those data, which are available right up to September 2023, the labor part, you get the labor participation rate the worker to population ratio, that is the amount of employed people in the population, and also the unemployment rates, not only for the country as a whole, but for women and men, and also for urban and rural areas. So if you see the labor participation rate, it is at its highest level ever. People wanting to or seeking work. And as regards the unemployment rate, it has fallen to 6.6%, not 10%, and that is probably the lowest in the series right now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll invite Mr. Piyush Shukla from Financial Express to ask his question. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, DGs. <coughs> sir, uh, the transmission of uh, your uh, uh, rate hikes uh, done through the last year and this year, uh, it's not reflecting in large banks' uh, savings account uh, deposits. So what are we doing about that? Uh, like Lata Mam said, a lot of people are packing money as well in mutual funds. So small banks are not able to register any growth in their casa, minuscule, single digit, lower single digit. So what's actually happening there? And secondly, sir, uh, 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 the willful default of circular which you've asked banks to apply within six months, there's a representation I hear made by IBA to extend the timeline to one year. So any update on that? Thank you. The first part related to transmission on savings rate of large banks. Okay. Now, the, with regard to the transmission of rates, that information I have provided, the numbers I have provided in a footnote to the statement. It's there. You might have already noticed it. You are talking about the savings and uh, savings yes, uh, yes, yes. bank interest rates. You also referred to more and more money is going into mutual funds. Now, that is the function of the economy. That is the function of the market. And that is a decision which uh, each individual has to take where he wants to put his money. How much money he wants to keep in banks, how much money he wants to put in mutual funds where all he is going to deploy his uh, money or his uh, savings so we cannot really you know have anything I would not like to say anything on that with regard to savings bank uh, interest rates you are right they haven't seen uh, much increase but as you would appreciate the uh, interest rates are deregulated and uh, any sort of uh, introduction of any kind of administered rate for any component of bank uh, deposits would be a very retrograde uh, step. So we have no such ideas. It's a commercial decision which the banks have to do. At times you would have noticed uh, several banks also do increase uh, their savings, uh, you know, savings account uh, interest rates because depending on their own liquidity assessment or depending on their own assessment of their own requirement and uh, the balance sheet. So it's a decision which is uh, left to the banks uh, to take. So far as RBI is concerned, the interest rates, as you are aware, are deregulated. I can come in on the willful defaulter. Ah, yes, on the willful, willful defaulter. On the willful part. defaulter case uh, representation, if I may say so, the entire draft circular has been put in public domain for comments. We have received feedback on the circular and we are in the process of analyzing them before we refine and finalize the circular. When so this feedback also will be factored in while taking a final decision on the circular. When will final circular come, sir? No, we are just in the process of analyzing, so shortly. Hmm. Uh, thank you, sirs. I'll move on to the left. Mr. Mayur Shetty from the Times of India. Thank you, Yogeshji. Uh, Governor, I wanted to know the thinking behind the announcement on uh, uh, the RBI providing cloud services. Is this an extension of uh, the uh, 
principle of uh, data sovereignty and uh, asking payment companies to have uh, on-soil storage of data. And uh, I had another question on uh, growth. What makes you so confident of growth given all the commentary that we are hearing on uh, sluggish uh, private investments, uncertain rural demand, and uh, slowing import demand also? Well, this question was, is, you know, I was anticipating this question, but I was wondering why it has not been asked. Uh, but on the cloud part, I would request uh, DG Ravi Shankar to reply. And uh, why we are setting it up, we have already explained, but let uh, DG Ravi Shankar take that part of the question. And uh, about our confidence uh, with regard to the growth, let DG Michael Patra reply. I'll supplement uh, if required. Mm -hmm. Data is increasing, you know, data storage, data processing. So efficiency is a major issue there. And uh, currently, if, if, you know, there is, if this data is sometimes uh, kept in house uh, on premises, sometimes in other clouds. We thought uh, the, the basic driver behind this is to provide a structured, scalable data, uh, you know, storage and data processing facility, which is why the cloud has been thought about. The idea is to, you know, ensure security, integrity and safety of data. It has got nothing to do with data sovereignty that that, uh, that you have referred to in your speech. What services will be provided and all will be determined in the course of time, whether it will be infrastructure as a service, which is a storage, or uh, you know whether it will be platforms that will be provided, whether it will be software that will be provided. Especially for smaller entities, you know, cooperative banks and those things. This provides a lot of efficiency in terms of scale because, you know, for each one to maintain their database and all that would involve a, a large amount of investment, skill and all that, which this uh, cloud is expected to provide. This cloud will be owned by financial sector entities, as we have clarified, going forward. At this point of time, our uh, idea is to just give it a push, let it start out, and then let the system manage. Like a digital public infrastructure. It's like a digital public yeah. infrastructure. No, no, we have said that at this point of time, ITAS will uh, you know, create it and run it. Going forward, it will shape. Yeah, on the growth part you can. Yeah. So as you know, the first half's uh, estimates have beaten all estimates, including ours. And if you just uh, sort of put that actual number and the projection we made in the last uh, policy together, you will come with number close to 7 or at 7. 6.8. 6. 6.8. So 6.9. Thank you. But if you look at October, November data, the high frequency data which we use for our now casts, they are all very robust right now. So if you just take October, November data, you will exceed seven. So at the current time, seven is like a conservative estimate. Uh, thank you, sirs. I'll move on to, uh, you know, Ms. Swati Bhat Shetty from Thomson Reuters. But uh, let me just, uh, you know, talk about, uh, you talked about the rural demand uh, you talked about now, and also you referred to CapEx, or perhaps I would like to touch up on it. Now, rural demand, uh, despite late uh, Kharif harvest in certain parts of the country, Kharif, uh, the rubby sowing, I'm sorry, the rubby sowing, two-thirds of it is already complete. Secondly, we have also seen that the two-wheeler sales, they have posted a significant uh, turnaround. And in fact, according to the, you know, the, according to the data provided by the Federation of Automobile Dealers Association, FADA, for the 42 days uh, festive period, festival period during October and November, the retail sales of two-wheeler recorded a growth of 20.7%. FMCG volumes in rural segment have also shown uh, improvement. In fact, they are growing uh, at about 6.4%. Uh, right from the beginning of this financial year, right from April onwards, the rural uh, demand for uh, FMCG is steadily picking up. 
and as per the latest data they have grown by about uh, you know 6.4% in the second quarter in the whole of second quarter this is fmcg volumes in the rural sector then the also very interestingly the demand for mg narega mahatma gandhi narega that uh, demand also has declined for the first time in this uh, financial year during the month of uh, november by about 4.6 percent so that is why we are saying that uh, there are signs that rural demand is also turning around now with regard to investment pickup government capex continues to be very strong in fact uh, the general government capex that is capital expenditure undertaken by both central government as well as the state governments they recorded a growth capital expenditure of general government recorded a growth of 36.7% during the period april to october in the first you know in the first 7 months from april to october 36.7% growth in capital expenditure secondly private capex has also is also showing signs of uh, revival particularly in sectors like uh, petroleum steel cement and uh, chemicals capacity utilization has now reached a kind of a threshold in fact it is uh, it is uh, you know it is higher than the long period average at uh, 74 so it has reached a point where we can expect private investment also to start to start picking up and already quite a bit of investment is taking place by private sector uh, manufacturing companies for example as uh, reflected in the fact that investment in uh, fixed assets by listed private manufacturing companies they registered a growth of 10.5% in the first half of the current financial year and a number of companies we have according to our survey and the inputs that we have received many companies manufacturing in the manufacturing sector are using their own internal reserves and surpluses to invest they are not approaching the bank or they are not resorting to any other uh, kind of uh, borrowing or raising funds they are using their own internal uh, reserves and surplus to investment and then uh, uh, the high frequency indicators of investment such as uh, steel consumption and uh, cement production and very importantly import of imports of capital goods they are also showing uh, you know good growth so all this i think uh, indicates that uh, you know the investment uh, cycle should uh, should continue uh, you know should continue into the future thank you Uh, thank you, uh, sir. I just wanted to check. You mentioned in your uh, statement today that FPI flows have started to pick up. Uh, they've also picked up on the debt side, and with India's uh, on the debt side, also flows have picked up. And with India's inclusion in the uh, global bond index next year, we could expect further flows. Uh, so, even if the overall flows into India are comfortable, uh, would you require any kind of macroprudential norms? Say, if there is uh, you know heavy investment in say the benchmark paper or any individual paper, are you considering any of those factors, and how would RBI respond to those? Thank you. I think I have commented. I have uh, mentioned about it uh, in some other uh, event. Now. the impact of the bond you know inclusion of india in the bond index what impact there are various assessments available uh, you know various uh, analysts are making you know various assessments as to how much of uh, you know how many dollars how many billion of dollars will flow in we have to see i mean i think it will start probably uh, as per reports it will start probably from uh, june onwards on a sort of month on month you know on a monthly basis it's not as if suddenly in june there will be a huge uh, uh, flow and as per the assessments made by various private analysts and others it will start happening from june onwards and it will happen on a month on month basis it will happen every month and uh, we have the capacity to deal with uh, that kind of inflows and uh, that's it i think uh, if you look at our uh, past uh, track record we have been managing this uh, flows uh, in both directions when it is uh, uh, when there are outflows or there are inflows and we are quite uh, 
confident of dealing with it and it will be a kind of a steady inflow that will if materializes from june onwards so we should be able to deal with it so apart from the you, you want to add anything ravi shankar or something you so wanted the, to say so huh? just one question or i'm just clarifying my question yeah so i was talking about if there is heavy investment in one particular bond would that be a matter of concern overall flows may be comfortable you've been managing those but say the benchmark bond if say a percentage of ownership in one bond becomes you know very heavily foreign owned is that going to be a cause of concern I think Ravi Shankar can take that question. I think we should cross the bridge when we come to it. Uh, you know, saying that what will happen if there is a lot of investment. Most, most central banks uh, globally, we have not had that issue here before. But most central banks globally monitor the total holding in any particular security by specific by any individual investors so that's something we also monitor but as i said that's not something that we have uh, had if it comes we will uh, deal with it at that point in time just to say one other point if you look at our history you know the total amount that people say will come in through the bond in index inclusion is between 20 to 25 billion dollar i think as far back as, as in 2013 we lost what about close to 20 billion dollars in a very short period of time without having too much of a problem you know we, we manage that so i think you know the concern that this could cause uh, volatility and all that is a bit overblown but from that we have all the instruments necessary the reserve levels are much higher the parameters for our exposure or uh, vulnerability are much better and so on so thank you thank you sirs i'll move on to uh, miss swati from z business to ask a question thank you yogesh uh, governor um aapne जो कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग के बारे में बात की है उस पर थोड़ा इलेबोरेट करेंगे कैसे नया फ्रेमवर्क एग्जिस्टिंग कस्टमर्स को हेल्प कर सकता है और साथ ही जो रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क की आप रिव्यूइंग की बात कर रहे हैं विच इज गुड टू ब्रिंग इन मोर इम्प्रूव एक्सेस टू स्मॉलर एक्सपोजर्स आप क्वांटिफाई कर सकते हैं स्मॉल यहाँ पर क्या है स्मॉल एक्सपोजर्स जो आप रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क स्ट्रेंथन कर रहे हैं जिससे जो छोटे एक्सपोजर्स है उसकी भी एक्सेस रेगुलेटर को बेटर रहे स्मॉल को अगर हम क्वांटिफाई कर पाए नहीं बट जो कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग की जहां तक आप पूछ रहे हैं कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग डिप्टी गवर्नर राजेश्वर राव ने उन्होंने ऑलरेडी क्लैरिफाई कर चुके हैं इसी कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग हैज नॉट नथिंग टू डू विद दिस इंटर कनेक्टेड इश्यू कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग का अभी भी गाइडलाइंस है मान लीजिए कोई बैंक के डायरेक्टर है अगर वो उसी बैंक से या दूसरे कोई बैंक से बोरो कर रहे हैं या बेसिकली कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग का मतलब मीनिंग ये है कि अ पर्सन जो कि एक पोजीशन में है जहां पे वो बैंक का डिसीजन को इन्फ्लुएंस कर सके उसको हम ब्रॉडली कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग कहते हैं और देर आर टू पार्टीज विच आर इंटर रिलेटेड a bank is lending to a party and there is an inter relationship already between the bank or uh, that party so that is called uh, connected lending already we have guidelines connected lending ke bare mein already guidelines se bank director for example bank directors jo hai directors of banks agar wo isi ek particular monetary level ke upar agar borrow kar rahe hain chahe koi bhi bank ho wo you know wo bank mein it has to be the level has to it has to be taken to the board or to the वो वो प्रेस्क्राइब किया हुआ है सो कनेक्टेड लेंडिंग का मतलब जो है मीनिंग वही है इंटरकनेक्टेड के साथ इंटरकनेक्टेडनेस के साथ उसका कोई कनेक्शन नहीं है थैंक यू जो वेब वेब एग्रीगेटर्स के लिए भी आपने जो डिजिटल लेंडिंग पर एक तरह से फोकस करने की बात की है तो क्या ये रिस्ट्रेन करेगा या टाइटन करेगा स्मॉलर टिकट लोन्स को सर विल इट इफेक्ट क्या I would say this is actually a follow up on the recommendations of the working group which was accepted by the Reserve Bank uh, which working group on digital lending which was accepted by the Reserve Bank last year we had come out with guidelines we said we'll also look at regulating the web survey uh, what do you call lending through the web platforms so we are planning to come out with guidelines which will specify what will be the the basic idea is the lending service platform they may collect information from various sources and give the detail to the customer but there could be a preference to certain things certain other things may not be covered so we will kind of give them some guidance on what should so that the borrower has full transparency on what are the rates available to him see wave aggregators who function karenge wo unko bilkul it's a it should be a neutral platform honi chahiye exactly 
ये ना होना चाहिए कि उन्हें कोई थ्रू सम अदर मेथड वो एक पर्टिकुलर लोन प्रोडक्ट को वो मतलब पुश शेल करेंगे सो so, हमारे नोटिस में कई सारे इंस्टेंसेस कुछ सारे कुछ कुछ इंस्टेंसेस आए हैं तो इसीलिए उसको वी आर ट्राइंग टू मेक इट ट्रांसपेरेंट न्यूट्रल एंड uh, कोई मतलब मिस uh, सेल ना होना चाहिए नहीं होना चाहिए एट द सेम टाइम बोरोर का डिसीशन पर इन्फ्लुएंस करने वाली भी उसमें कोई स्कोप uh, नहीं होना चाहिए थैंक यू सर सर विल टेक लास्ट फ्यू क्वेश्चन लास्ट फ्यू ये सर ओके बिकॉज दे हैव बीन सम पीपल हु हैव बीन वेटिंग वेरी पेशेंटली सो आई स्टार्ट विद हमसिनी कार्तिक फ्रॉम हिंदू बिजनेस लाइन फॉलोड बाय हितेश व्यास एंड यू नो विद मिस्टर पंकज जहेर Uh, from the informants okay hi thank you uh, there seems to be a, a, a sort of growing reliance by most of the uh, lenders banks and nbfcs put together for risk based pricing uh, this is both on the secured as well as the unsecured side uh, you've attacked you've tried to or rather you have attacked the secured side unsecured side through the rwa but but yet there is a sense that we can price the risk very well at a regulatory level is this something that you all are very comfortable with and there is another layer to it on the secured loans where we seeing that the terminal value of assets are actually reducing in terms of their uh, 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 market value when they put put out visa vis a new property this is evident with cars this is evident with uh, home loans etc as well but the pricing between the two is really shrinking whether we take uh, mortgages versus lap or second hand cars versus new cars it is shrinking is that okay. a cause no, of concern for you understood i think dg swaminathan uh, i would request him to take that question so essentially risk weights have to be aligned with the type of uh, the product and the segment to which it caters to so the macro prudential level the regulations try to segregate them on that principle and then accordingly we ensure that the risk weights are assigned so the the lenders will accordingly calibrate their business models so uh, wherever we see a possible risk build up as a preemptive uh, action that we have taken certain measure and to remind you Uh, that these additional risk weights on some of the items are only bringing back what was actually prevalent pre covid uh, these segments were sort of uh, a bit of relaxations were brought in to facilitate an very unusual situation mm -hmm. so they are now back to the normal numbers apart from nbfc which was a recent phenomena which we we had to act upon